Friends, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Happy Easter as we gather tonight for evening prayer. In this season of the resurrection, we're reminded of God's love and the transforming power of God's grace in our lives. Tonight's text is the encounter between the risen Christ and Peter. The risen Lord greets Peter with a disarming question. Do you love me? It's a question that we too must answer as the risen Lord poses it to us continually. It's a beautiful text, but along with that question comes a challenge. Do you love me? Then feed my sheep, tend my lambs, feed my lambs. The risen Lord extends grace unimaginable and a challenge for us to live out our call. Tonight, I will read the text twice. After the first reading, I prepared a meditation on the text to share with you. And we will have a brief silence, and I will read the text again and offer you a time to reflect on the power of God's grace. Now join me in a short time of silence as we prepare our hearts to receive and to reflect on God's word to us. Let us keep the silence. Lord of resurrection surprises, open our hearts this day to the presence of the risen Christ. Erase our excuses for unbelief and exchange them for strong witness to the power of your mercy and love. Give us courage and challenge to walk the path of discipleship, knowing that Jesus goes before us leading and guiding our steps. Open our hearts to your word to us. In Jesus' name, amen. The text this evening is from the Gospel of John, chapter 21, verses 15 through 19. It is the risen Christ meeting with Peter. Listen now for God's word to you. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my lambs. A second time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter felt hurt because he said to him a third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Very truly I tell you, when you were younger, you used to fasten your own belt and to go wherever you wished. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will fasten a belt around you and take you where you do not wish to go. He said this to indicate the kind of death by which he would glorify God. After this, Jesus said to him, follow me. Peter loved Jesus. He was a devoted disciple. He had everything 
his family, his vocation, his possessions. He left it all to follow Jesus. Peter declared his life and dedicated it to this rabbi, this teacher, his Lord. No one would question his loyalty. His love was deeply embedded in the commitment he lived out. Fast forward to that terrible night when Jesus shared his final meal with his disciples. There was talk of betrayal. Peter would have no part of it. He proclaims loudly, Lord, I will never turn my back on you. I will gladly die for you. But Jesus in love looked on him and predicated, no, Peter, I tell you that before the rooster crows, before the dawn breaks through, you will deny me, not once, but three times. Peter was no doubt devastated by this prediction. I will never deny you, Lord. But we all know how that story ends. Peter denies the Lord three times, then remembering Jesus' words, he weeps bitterly. The guilt and anguish he must have felt was horrible. Then as Jesus is led to the cross and he dies, Peter flees and goes into hiding. I can only imagine how much he despised himself. Surely no one would ever let him forget how he had turned his back on his master, his teacher, his Lord. Fast forward again, flooded with sadness and grief, he humbly returns to what he knows best, fishing. But they are catching nothing. And then the risen Christ, his master, Jesus, comes once again. The nets then overflow with fish. Jesus' heart, his compassion, goes out to Peter and he asks him the all-important question, Simon, son of John, do you love me? In that little phrase, Jesus was letting Peter know that nothing had changed. He was still the rock on which Jesus would build his church. He was still the one to lead the disciples in sharing the gospel. His denial of Jesus was forgiven. Now Peter, in his own way, had to forgive himself. Do you love me? Do you trust me? Then do what you committed to do, and I will be with you. Once again, like in those first moments back on the shore, Jesus bid Peter, Follow me. Peter's confession of love is followed by a challenge. Feed my sheep, tend my lambs, feed my lambs. When we profess our love for God, we face the challenge of living out our call to serve Jesus. Do you love me? Jesus bids. Yes, Lord, I love you then live out your call. Be the person you know in your heart you are called to be. But what if I fail? Jesus assures us, I will still love you. Live out your call. But what if I deny you by my words and my actions? I will still love you. Live out your call. But but, but it's more than enough that the risen Christ has revealed God's love for us. We're forgiven, redeemed, and blessed. We will fail, and at times our very actions will deny him. We'll turn our backs at times on the gifts that we've been given, and yet God is relentless and continues to call us, and our Savior bids us to follow. 
The response is up to us. Much like us, Peter's life was unpolished, broken, and torn. And yet Jesus loved him, called him, and empowered him to use the gifts he had been given to share the good news of God's love in Jesus Christ. In his first sermon at Pentecost, this dejected disciple, affirmed by love, preaches the sermon to be all sermons. And over 3,000 people are baptized. Friends, the risen Christ calls us unpolished, torn, and broken to come as we are and live out our call. This is the good news. The risen Christ is with us. Listen again to the reading from the Gospel of John. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my lambs. A second time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, tend my sheep. He said to him a third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter felt hurt because he said to him a third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you used to fasten your own belt and go wherever you wish. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will fasten a belt around you and take you where you do not wish to go. He said this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. After this, he said to him, follow me. Jesus was extending the fullness of God's grace to Peter, and he extends the same to us. Where in your life do you need the assurance of God's grace and forgiveness? Where in your life do you need that assurance? Let us spend a few moments in quiet reflection. Loving God, in Christ's glorious resurrection, you have revealed to us the depth of your love for us. You have extended to us grace upon grace. And now, O oh God, help us to look within and to allow that grace to permeate the broken spaces in our hearts so that living and loving as your faithful disciples we may shine the light of Christ's glorious resurrection in our lives and in the lives of those we encounter. 
Give us, O oh God, the courage and strength to serve you as Christ has served us. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. this evening, we're reminded that each time Jesus appeared to his disciples, each time following his resurrection, he greeted them with a simple phrase, peace be with you. Frightened and in an upper room on a seashore, there he revealed himself on the road to Emmaus, Jesus offered new life and hope, but always greeted them with words of peace. As we come before God in prayer tonight, let us find the peace that is ours in Christ Jesus. Pray with me. Mysterious God, in the evening when the disciples meet frightened behind locked doors, you came to them with words of peace. For wicked plots had failed and the cruelty of the world came to nothing and the betrayal and the denial of friends have not prevailed. Life-giving God, we give you thanks for Jesus has risen and he comes to us with words of peace. Come to us today, O oh God, in government rooms where politicians meet, in city boardrooms where executives plan, in courtrooms where lawyers debate. Come to us, O oh God, with words of peace. Come to us, O oh God, in hospital rooms where people are waiting, in prison cells where people are afraid, in homes where people struggle to make ends meet. For those who stand in fear because of the color of their skin or their orientation, come to us, O oh God, with words of peace.
Come to us, O God, whenever we are afraid, whenever we are grieving. Come to us now as we pray in silence for those we care for and are worried about. Come to us, Lord Jesus, as we remember these burdens, these friends in our lives. Despite the strong and solid doors we lock to protect ourselves, to shut out the world, come to us, Lord Jesus, with words of peace. In this season of Easter, O oh God, breathe on us again with your spirit. For you have overcome evil and you have defeated death and won a wonderful victory. So that as we share in Christ's death, we also share in his glorious resurrection. Renew us in the power of your spirit that we may open the doors and go out into the world to bring words of peace to all those we encounter, to those we love and serve, to anyone, O oh Lord. Renew us in the power of your spirit that we may have life in your name and may we go wherever you send us. We ask all of these things in the name of Jesus Christ, the risen Lord, our Savior, and hear us now with one voice as we pray the prayer Jesus taught us all to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. <clears throat>